Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the sixth day of two weeks of Elizabeth Gaskell. Today we're going to be talking about my ninth favourite Elizabeth Gaskell book and that is The Moorland Cottage. One. If you take the turn to the left after you pass the light gate at Combehurst Church, you will come to the wooden bridge over the brook. Keep along the field path, which mounts higher and higher, and in half a mile or so you will be in a breezy upland field, almost large enough to be called a down, where sheep pasture on the soft, fine, elastic turf. The Moorland Cottage is a novella by Elizabeth Gaskell that was first published in 1850, about 45,000 words, and is a highly, highly enjoyable book. Another one, I think, that is further down on this list simply because it's not quite as long and as meaty as some of her other books. And while I love it dearly, there are just so many other books that beat it for me because I love Elizabeth Gaskell so much. But this is one I would highly, highly recommend if you are a big enjoyer of Elizabeth Gaskell and it's not one you've read before. I would also highly recommend it if you enjoy George Eliot and if you like her book Mill on the Floss. I have not yet read Mill on the Floss, but this was apparently a key influence to Mill on the Floss and if the one film adaptation I have seen of Mill on the Floss is in any way correct in its plot it has a lot of similarities to The Moorland Cottage. One of the reasons why I am so keen to finally actually pick up Mill on the Floss is because having read this I'm interested to see how Gaskell influenced George Eliot in that way even though in my personal opinion Elizabeth Gaskell is a superior author to George Eliot but I know that not everyone agrees with me on that and that is my personal taste but still. The Moorland Cottage is a really fascinating novella. It follows the character of Maggie who's grown up in a cottage with her widowed mother and her brother. Maggie's brother Edward is the apple of their mother's eye. Her mother dotes completely on her brother. To her he can do no wrong whereas Maggie is an annoyance, a trouble, a difficulty and not someone she really cares about. Edward is cruel, controlling and masterly to Maggie. He has grown up being used to his word, being law and he is quite happy for that to remain the case and their sibling relationship is in many ways at the heart of this story and is a really important powerful drive to this book. The fact that Maggie both loves and dislikes likes her brother, the fact that she can shrink from him but also feels she owes him this kind of duty and also has this affection for him. Although they live in a more than cottage that is fairly secluded, they end up becoming friends in some way with a nearby family called the Buxtons. Mrs Buxton is a fairly wealthy upper class woman, she is an invalid and she takes great pleasure in the company of Maggie. And as Maggie grows up, the young gentleman of the house Frank Buxton begins to take more and more notice of Maggie and we get a love story here. But what I love about the more than cottage so much is that while it is hard a brilliant, wonderful, touching, lovely love story and a story about the difficulties that class and social position and social difference can cause, the different perceptions of class and social position in the Victorian period. It's also a complicated story about the relationship between Maggie and her brother, the difficulties and problems of that family dynamic and the way that the treatment of Maggie's mother and brother has always oppressed Maggie throughout her life. It's also incredibly exciting and has a wonderful dramatic ending, one of those Elizabeth Gaskell books that goes on in its nice smooth course until suddenly a thing happens and you're like oh that was not what I thought was going to happen with this book. She has a few of these, Mary Barton and A Dark Knight's Work also being amongst that number but this one is definitely there and a really enjoyable read. Unlike a lot of Elizabeth Gaskell I have only read this the once and I do think that if I read this again in future it might kind of go up in my estimation because there was a lot that I loved about it. I read it very quickly pretty much in one sitting and I think if I were to read it again and digest it a little more it might scoot up a little on this list because it is such an enjoyable read. I I also believe that there was a sort of adaptation of it. A few years back there was a TV miniseries called Cranford. The first series was a TV adaptation of Elizabeth Gaskell's novellas Cranford, My Lady Ludlow and Mr Harrison's Confessions and the second series, which I never saw very sadly, was an adaptation I believe in part of The Moorland Cottage, though I think it was a fairly loose adaptation. I have not seen that but I'm hoping to quite soon. I might try and buy the DVD because I didn't even know it existed until I was having a conversation with Caroline from BBC Girl 520 when she was reading this and she told me about that and I was very excited so I'm looking forward to potentially seeing that in the future and seeing how they adapt this story into a slightly different form and a slightly different setting. I would highly recommend The Moorland Cottage, it is a thoroughly enjoyable Elizabeth Gaskell read with a lot of interesting points in it. I'm really hoping to read George Eliot's Mill on the Floss in the next month or so and once I've read that I'm really looking forward to looking back on The Moorland Cottage and seeing how the two compare. Please let me know down in the comments if you have read The Moorland Cottage and what you thought of it or if you'd like to pick it up in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the next Elizabeth Gaskell book.